Hi everyone, this is Richard Ozzy at the Camden New Journal and we're video calling Georgia Gould again this week to see what the latest is. She's the leader of Camden Council. Um, what's going on in Camden? Are you okay, Georgia? Yeah, no, I'm okay. I'm at home, but obviously thinking of, of everyone in hospital and everyone battling this disease at this really difficult time. Yeah, and yeah, I can see that you've got the kind of sun, sun coming through the window there. It's a sunny day um, and I know what you said last week about the parks and the people in them. What's the situation this week? Do you think a lot of people are, are out there or indoors? Yeah, no, it's, it's a beautiful day and I know people are tired of, of being cooped up inside, but our public health teams are really concerned about there being too many people in parks and on our high streets this weekend. So just a heartfelt plea from me. If you, if you can stay at home, if you have a garden, you have a balcony, you can walk on a local road, please do. If you see that our parks are busy, just walk somewhere else. You know, there are so many people who are risking their lives to keep us safe and, and sadly in some cases losing them. And, you know, it's, it's not often you can, you can save people's lives just, just by simple decision of staying at home. And, and today you really can. So, so we are worried about it and just, just really a plea for, for everyone to, 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 to think about how busy it could get and to stay at home if you can. And you've got the, uh, the markets are still open though, up in West Hampshire, the market's open again today. Last weekend, there was a kind of debate about whether that should have gone ahead. Um, other areas of the country, street markets have closed down. But what's the situation in Camden? So we, you know, the public health advice we've had is that markets can be a really safe way for people to get food, um, an alternative um, to going to, to a supermarket. And we have been supporting our, our street traders and our, our markets, especially those providing um, fresh food, to do this safely. And there's been a huge amount of work that's gone on this week um, with the, the, the markets team to ensure that West Hampstead Market particularly is, is led safely. You know, there was, there was a lot done last week, but I think we recognise more needed to be, to be done in terms of, of safe queuing, less people coming in, um, stall organisation and our markets team I think were there today to, to ensure it was set out in a way um, that allowed social distancing. And do you think the social distancing, the stay at home, all these messages, the two metre rule, do you think that's getting through to everybody in the community? Um, are there different kind of groups that are taking the message more seriously? I mean I think that I I've been in awe of the way that people have stepped up to to support this effort and you know the, the amount of emails and messages I've had from people thanking council staff and, and all the key workers for, for what they're doing and I think most people are doing their bit I think that there are you know some people who, who for whatever reason aren't hearing the message and, and we're doing a lot of work to make sure that you know we're getting these communications out in, in, in every way we can the partnership with the CNJ I think is is really working but but using social media working with our youth workers um, making sure that all the public health messages are translated into into different languages um, but I think you know we are all neighbors we're all part of this community so so anything um, that, that anyone listening can do to, to talk to the people around them and just just remind them how important um, it is to stay home and you really are saving lives you mentioned key workers before and of course key workers include a lot of people who work for local governments and uh, maybe people don't always see them in the same way as NHS workers on the front line but I mean, you'd include the binmen and all sorts of people working for people for the council. Um, what, what, what difficulties are they facing? Oh my God, the, the absolute um, courage um, and, and dedication that our, that our key workers are showing in Camden is just um, completely out, uh, outstanding. I, I met, I was volunteering last week and I, I met some of our team who are usually um, uh, work in sheltered accommodation or libraries and they were all helping with food distribution or, or getting food to vulnerable people. Um, we have you know, our core services like, like those who, who collect our waste, who, who are out every day. Um, and you know, I've seen so many messages of support and thanks and people recognize that what they're doing is, is, um, is extraordinary. And we should always recognize that day in, day out, but at this time, even more so. Um, unfortunately, while the vast majority of people are supportive, we have had a few incidents of, of um, abuse and people questioning why people are out. So, you know, just really a plea that, that for, those, for those key workers who are going out, keeping our estates clean, collecting rubbish, social workers checking on vulnerable children, they are, you know, they're real heroes. And, and I, I would love that, that all of Camden got behind them and, and supported them at this time.
But realistically, you can't keep all the streets as clean as you would in normal times. Or is there differences towards the services that people could and should expect? Yeah, I think, you know, services will change, might change. Um, I think we are, you know, we are like every part of the public sector, seeing people having to self-isolate, seeing sickness levels. Um, so, you know, we are, we're being very clear that you won't always see the, the same service. Um, at the moment, we are still, you know, in terms of bin collections, we're, we're still doing most of, um, of what we usually do, but we've stopped um, bulky waste collection. We're asking people just just to be uh, thoughtful. You know, don't do massive clear outs at this time. I took great pleasure in telling my partner that that was our public health advice, that we couldn't do a massive clear out. But, you know, if you are showing symptoms, um, make sure you kind of bundle up all of uh, your personal waste in two bags and put it aside for three days. So, so you know, and it, you know, things might change as, as this crisis progresses, we might have to, you know, look at, look at the, the pattern of services differently, but, um, we are prioritizing what we can do to keep um, uh, are those core services that keep people safe going. So that's, that's you know, children safeguarding, adult services, making sure that we are collecting people's uh, waste, that we are um, cleaning the, uh, mo where our most vulnerable live, like, like, like sheltered housing. So we will continue with those services, but, but bear with us because we are under enormous pressure. And some people are being quite surprised to see parking wardens still out there. On, on the streets and issuing tickets is that is that what's happening or or is it different no, our parking our, our parking wardens are out to try and protect um spaces for key workers so we've offered 2500 uh, free spaces for our key workers and we're trying to identify more all the time so that so they are playing an enormously important role in in making sure that that those people who are who are in our hospitals, in our GP services, who are who are, who are literally on the front line in this and, and saving lives, can drive in safely. Um, so we owe them a huge debt of gratitude, and and that and that's you know primarily that's what they're out there doing. Um, they're not playing a big enforcement role at the moment, except where things are dangerous. But but they're there ensuring that there are spaces for for those who need them. And in terms of there's been a national debate about the apparent lack of PPE for all sorts of different professions. That includes uh, council workers, I guess, the refuse collectors. Or they have you got enough um, and PPE for your staff? Yeah, I mean, this is a massive concern and I know leaders from uh, across London and the country, we've all been raising this with government that we need to make sure we have, have enough and there have been shortages in the capital. Luckily in Camden, you know, we, we, we have um, been been getting our own provision in. We we have managed to get a good supply together. We've had, I think, over 100 drop-offs to, to different public services across the borough. Um, thousands of um, different different parts of PPE have, have been distributed. So so right now we do, but um, I know that that's not the case everywhere. So so it's something, you know, which is a massive call on the government to, to ensure that those who, who are doing this vital work are, are protected while they're doing it. But should... should the refuse collectors and who come around should they be wearing masks and gloves if you if you see those it, it, it's not just nurses and, and yeah yeah and so workers. so our public health um team are working with us to ensure that every every service um has you know a bespoke ppe um set of guidelines and we're following all of those so so you know de depending on the service depending on what they do there is um it, there's there's different ppe recommended so you will see um people wearing gloves and and masks and in in many of those roles okay and one thing that has uh, raised concerns i think over the last couple of weeks is is the the number of rough sleepers or homeless people still seem to be on the streets in camden i know there was a kind of pledge to get everybody somewhere to live um i think on friday what what what's what's the state of play in camden yeah i mean i think i said last week this is a massive concern to us people who are on the streets are, uh, are vulnerable anyway but particularly vulnerable to to this disease um being so exposed and with some of the health outcomes that our rough sleepers see so there has been an absolutely mammoth effort to to support people into accommodation so a huge thank you to our street outreach teams um everyone who's been procuring accommodation streets kitchen who've been helping getting food to that accommodation we've seen 80 people um uh, housed who haven't been housed previously some of them who who don't have recourse to public funds and you know who who, who wouldn't usually um be eligible um for for that kind of um that kind of protection 
and we have a, 190 rooms I think available now for for others who might need them uh, it is it is difficult work we're seeing more people come onto our streets and and into Camden every day so when you st still see people um on the streets it's, it's partly that it's it's partly some people don't want to go into to those rooms but to, to rest assured we we have accommodation now for, for everyone who who needs it and our outreach teams are doing the work of trying to get people safely into to that accommodation and i have um this is this is the telephone number to call if if you want to refer a rough sleeper into our our services into into accommodation this is the the telephone number to call and and i think i just finally say you know this has been a massive effort where we appreciate the funding from from government but if we can get all of our rough sleepers off the streets and into accommodation during this crisis there's no reason we can't do that all the time we shouldn't have people on our streets it shouldn't just be in a crisis this is the kind of support that should be available all year round and, and that's what we will be fighting for as, as we come out of this can you can you tell us what kind of accommodation is it did you make a deal with the hotels or have you is it are, it's a mix. So we have, um, we've reopened uh, one of our hostels. We are opening up some of our voids accommodation to those in temporary accommodation. And then uh, we've got uh, hotel accommodation, yeah, that we've, the, the, that we've um, procured for, for, um, for, for rough sleepers. So it, it's a real mix. Okay. In terms of the uh, attempts to help people, there's been an amazing uh, community response. But there are some people, I think, who... Who, who would like to help but not quite sure how what what would you say to them yeah i i mean it's it's been absolutely amazing and extraordinary to see the way that our community sector our faith groups our voluntary sector has stepped up and there are just so many examples of of organizations doing brilliant things i volunteered last week with aduk packing boxes and to see the way the the community and the council were coming together was was incredibly moving and and the the volunteers there were you know they were they they were full of care and compassion for for those who need it most um anyone can help there's so much you can do in terms of calling people and checking in on them dog walking um uh, delivering packages and i would encourage you i've got official aids this week <laughs> to sign up to our um our website uh, time to spare and we'll link you with local organizations that that you can volunteer with We've had uh, over 1,400 people signed up and hundreds of those people have already been connected with opportunities. So, so do volunteer. Um, and, and, if you, and if you can afford to, I'd also really encourage you to, to donate to Camden Giving. Um, Camden Giving have a fund that's come together to, um, to invest in the many brilliant organizations um, supporting our, our communities. They're, they're a local organization that that are there to get more money and funding into um, the voluntary sector. So this is their, their website, if you can donate, camdengiving.org.uk, donate. Thank you. Okay. And just, uh, I think to pop, pop some of the reason, one of the reasons for these kind of video calls is to try and clear up some gray areas. And one of the gray areas seems to be construction sites. And some of them are going on the council own sites as well, right? Um, I think there was one in Hampstead last week. Um, what is the, what is the, uh, what, what is the advice there and should work be going on? So the government advice is that construction can continue. We in Camden are worried about this. We're worried about the safety on construction sites. We're worried about the pressure it puts on um, our transport network. So we um, are really encouraging contractors and private uh, construction going on in Camden to, to stop. And we, we've written to all of our contractors and you know our big projects have now stopped so the the town hall refurbishment the west end project our sit projects like agar grove um, maitland park they will pause construction and we're really grateful for for our contractors for working with us to to keep people safe we don't yet have the power to to stop construction where it's not council um led and so we are you know we really support the mayor's call for for construction that isn't urgent and, and isn't around health and safety to be paused because you know this is this is ultimately about saving lives and we want we want um we want people to be safe and we are concerned about the, the level of construction going on um I, we touched on it briefly last week but if you have a, if you if you're living in a council flat and uh and you do have a disaster something major breaks down the heating or the ceiling comes in from the flat upstairs can you get help what do you do when you're when you're kind of stuck indoors 
Yeah, so we've stopped all non-essential repairs, but you know, if, if it's a safety issue or it's a really urgent repair that our teams are still, are still there. So just do what you would normally do, call, call the, the Camden repairs line and somebody will, will come and, and do those repairs. And again, you know, the, the huge thank you to those people who are continuing to work. We're making sure they have all the protective equipment they need, but, but their kind of courage and dedication for all of this is, is so appreciated. And can you give us an idea of how the workforce is affected? Because we obviously, most organisations are now affected by coronavirus in terms of the health of their, their employees or their workers. What, what kind of situation is it at Camden at the moment? Have you, have you got a lot of staff off ill? Have you got a lot of people isolated? So we do. We do have a, um, large numbers of staff who are having to self-isolate, who have underlying health conditions, who, who can't come to work as they usually would, or who have been ill. Um, and, and had had coronavirus, sadly. Um, but we are, we've stopped doing a lot of things. So um, our, our, at the moment, our libraries aren't open, for example. And so we are, we, we are looking at all of our staff and where we can redeploy people, we're doing so. So, you know, you've, you've seen um, uh, like the kind of amazing way people have stepped up. So, so as I said earlier, librarians who are helping doing food distribution, uh, some of our sports team who'd usually be doing kind of physical activity, um, delivering food packages. So people have volunteered to, to continue to work on the front line, even if it's not what they usually do. Um, and we are, um, we, we do have enough people to do the, the critical things that we need to do, keeping our children safe and we're doing welfare checks for for all of the children who are at risk twice a week, um, our adult social care teams who help um, care for, for older people. So there, there is resilience in those teams, but you know, we are under enormous pressure and people are, are working so hard to, to meet this crisis. So, so you know, while, while we are kind of responding and we are able to do so, um, it, you, know, you might not see the, 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 the levels of um responsiveness and speed of responsiveness as you usually would i just ask you one more actually inside the schools they're still doing an amazing job aren't they they're still going it's still they're still going on and and helping the the children of key workers oh the schools the schools are the schools have been absolutely outstanding yeah they're they're open they're helping the children the key workers and and vulnerable children who we've identified um need to still be at school and but not just that they've been doing a huge amount to support kids who are at home so they've they've been delivering packs they've been um creating online resources um sing-alongs and just uh, what the creativity is just outstanding and we have been working with them to make sure that, that no child goes hungry so we've delivered thousands of free school meals um to to children uh, around the borough some some collecting them and and we will continue to do so over the Easter Easter period. And, you know, the, the government uh, have come forward with a voucher scheme now, but nobody has gone on hungry in the meantime and will continue to, to support children uh, with food uh, who need it. OK. Thanks then. Thanks then, Georgia. And we'll catch up next week. Thank you. And thanks for all you're doing to, to tell the story of the kind of hope and inspiration of, of our communities in Camden.